Hi guys, today I'm finally going to be showing you my very requested 10 step morning acne fighting, wrinkle fighting, free radical scavenging, moisturizing winter morning skincare routine. That was a long name. <laughs> that ultimately allows me to get the now very famous glow that I have on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. So if this sounds interesting, let's get into it. First step is gonna be of course cleansing. Now this glow that you're seeing right now is the remainder of my nighttime skincare routine because I always say that if you're waking up that your skin is not glowing and that you don't have any skincare on from the light before, that means you haven't applied enough. That means that your skin could have even absorbed a lot more. So that's my first pro tip, especially for dry skin types. But anyways, I really like to use hydrating cleansers. My current favorites are going to be the same as my nighttime skincare routine that I already showed you. So it's going to be the Cetaphil Gentle Skin Cleanser, the First Day Beauty Facial Cleanser, the Simple Moisturizing Facial Wash. Love this because it's so cheap but so good. The CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser a classic and also a simple foaming cleanser but this is so gentle I would say like it's not really a foaming cleanser because it won't strip your skin it's not really for oily skin types it's more for normal to drier skin I just switch around to each one of these because I love them all very much equally today just for the sake of this I'm gonna go with this one first of all look at the consistency of this it's literally of a moisturizer like it is so thick and moisturizing I tip I want to give you is that even though I have oily acne prone skin I still like to use hydrating cleanser because I really don't feel the need of using foaming cleansers. My thinking is if you are using exfoliators like lactic acid, salicylic acid, or glycolic acid in the forms of toners or serums, then really there is no point for you to go in with a foaming cleanser because the exfoliating step, the step that is going to remove the excess sebum, that is going to remove the acne, is going to be those exfoliating toners or serums. So the foaming cleanser, if you don't pay attention, is actually just going to give you with more stripped skin and your skin feeling extra dry, which is really just the opposite of what you want because dehydrated damaged skin barrier is going to lead to ultimately more of acne and pimples. Some mornings right after cleansing I'd go in with my current favorite the Foreo Bear Microcurrent Device. It truly is amazing for anti-aging anyone who really wants to prevent the formation of wrinkles and balance or if you already have them and you want to tonify the muscles and reduce the appearance of your aging skin and really just like tighten your skin up and reduce the laxity or loosening up of your skin. I'm not going to do this now because I want to do it at night. I sometimes do it in the morning when I have to go out somewhere but I'm quarantining right now so I just prefer to do it at night but this truly is amazing a game changer if you want to step up your skincare so you're using retinols you're using peptides all anti-aging ingredients but you feel like it's not enough you want to be doing a little more without having to go to a, like a derm or a plastic surgeon and you know like maybe get fillers and Botox this is that right in the middle you can do at home that is really going to give you the best results because if you know anything about like aging skin and the way our face ages there really are three corporates in terms of aging skin. That is going to be first of all the bone but there's not much that we can do unless we actually like get facial implants and plastic surgery and so you know that's going to be like the most invasive out of them all and not everyone even me myself I don't think I'm ready to go down that route quite yet. Then there's going to be of course our skin layer aging so we're tackling that through our skincare in terms of retinols, peptides, antioxidants, vitamin C's but what about our muscle layer? Skincare never penetrates into the muscle layer so what can we do to prevent that from aging? The Foreo Bear microcurrent is going to be the answer for you. Really, this is going to give you more tightness, make you look a lot younger, and also give you a little bit of a lift in your face. Because if you think about it, when you're moving your brow muscles, your frontalis, the forehead muscles right here, all you're doing is tightening and contracting a muscle. This does the same thing. So in the long run, if you keep doing that or keep doing this, you're going to tighten these muscles and lift up your face overall. So it truly is just logical that this works. There are also so many studies on top of that. This is why I'm a firm believer of it, and I really, really, really love it. So totally recommend it. Next step is going to be essences and toners. Now I have a few that I want to show you that I really like right now. Now with essences and toner you could basically go two routes. One is going to be the plant extracts and the really soothing moisturizing ones and the other one is going to be the active ingredients route. So usually I tend to like more like plant extracts for my toners and essences. So in that case if you want just soothing and hydration especially for the winter and for my dry skin types which are going to be very gentle because you prefer to use your active in your serum step, which I'm going to be showing you later, then I really am loving currently the Pyongyang Yule Essence Toner. This is like, everyone should have this. No matter your skin type, no matter what your concerns are, this is a toner that you need. I literally buy this in bulk, like two bottles every time, like I'm not kidding. And then the I'm From Mugwort Essence. This is a little bit bougie and pricey, but really Mugwort is so soothing and moisturizing. It also does have a little bit of anti-aging properties, but no matter if you believe that or not, this toner is very soothing and moisturizing in itself, so I definitely totally recommend. But I 
I tend to go down the soothing, moisturizing, plant-based route at night. In the morning, I really prefer to use more active ingredients to really give me like a more brighter look to my face. So in that case, we're using active. So I'm currently loving this Ula Enriksen Glow OH Dark Spot Toner. This is a little bit bougie and also is quite highly fragrant, but I don't mind fragrance at all right now, so. It was all a lie. Guys, it was all a lie. She lied. I actually really like this. I also am loving this AHA, BHA, PHA 30 Day Miracle Toner by Some By Me. This is super gentle, even though it is packed with these actives. Really good. Even for dry skin types, I might say. And then, Naturium. It's a brand that I've been obsessed ever since, like, it launched. Susan, we love her. And really using actives like AHAs and BHAs, which I am using right now, in your toner step is actually a very great way to incorporate exfoliation, but in a very gentle way. So, if, for example, you have sensitive skin, or you have dry skin and you have tried BHA or AHA serums but you feel like they might be a little bit too strong or you're worried about damaging your skin barrier because you know again you have skin through the skin then really using toners is gonna be the best and most gentle way so that's what I just love to use then I'm gonna go in with the Alpha Arbutin Essence now Alpha Arbutin is a little bit a sister to niacinamide because they basically have the same properties I feel like it's a little bit more skin brightening than niacinamide and for some reason I prefer it a lot more compared to niacinamide Cinnamide. It is a lot more gentler and it doesn't break you out as easily as niacinamide does, at least for me. So if you are breaking out from niacinamide, try Alpha Arbutin is a lot better. And it really is known in Korea for like its skin lightening properties. So it's really gonna brighten up your skin, which my morning skin routine, by the way, is all about brightening the skin, giving the glow, moisturizing her and protecting her throughout the day. Now it's time for the serum steps, honey. You know that I'm crazy for my serums, okay? Literally like it's a grocery list of serums that I have to do. It's like a chore. So first one is actually gonna be Naturium again. Like we know that we love Miss Susan, okay? And also the name Naturium, it just reminds me of like a Harry Potter spell like Expelliarmus or like again, just imagine Naturium. <laughs> and basically your skin is gonna turn out into this amazing glowy thing that you're gonna blind your enemy. Ooh, a school of magical skincare. And I, of course, would be Lord Voldemort because I mean, I'm getting my third nose job in a month. And by then, I mean, I would have like 70 nose jobs and my nose would have fallen off. So I'm Voldemort, of course. <laughs> Going in with this Naturium Vitamin C Complex Serum. If I'm not mistaken, this has 10% or 12% of vitamin C. It is not ascorbic acid. It is a vitamin C derivative. Now, the thing with vitamin C derivatives is that there's not a lot of research backing them up. Like, the most research that is presented is for ascorbic acid. The rest are supposedly gonna work, but there really is no guarantee. So, use them as your own discretion. Also, vitamin C is very tricky to stabilize, not only in the serum and the formula, itself because really it should be paired with vitamin E and ferulic acid. Skin SkinCeuticals is one of the only serums that managed to stabilize it. But also you have to pay attention to how it is delivered. Usually pumps work a lot better because vitamin C gets denatured when it comes in contact with oxygen. It becomes oxidized. It is an anti-oxygen, antioxidant. But honestly, no matter what, this is so moisturizing and really pleasant to apply on the skin. So even if it doesn't give me antioxidant protection, I'm still gonna use it. Now, another pro tip that you could do instead of vitamin C, if maybe you feel that it is a little bit too irritating for you because you have dry skin, is use a vitamin C alternative antioxidant. So that would be, again, a vitamin E. Not as powerful as vitamin C, but it's still great. Resveratrol from The Ordinary. It's always sold out, but that's because it just is amazing. I actually think I would gravitate more towards the resveratrol than a vitamin C if I could get my hands on it. Or like an EGCG serum. So basically, it's the antioxidant containing green tea. That is also super powerful and amazing. Now, this next one is going to be a shock for you guys, as soon as I reveal what it is, you're all probably gonna be throwing tomatoes and eggs at me, but that is gonna be, I don't think you're ready, the nice Cinemite Serum. Yup, 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 yup. So I know that I've been bashing niacinamide this whole entire time. It's basically is my side hobby now. Bashing niacinamide. I'm the biggest boldly. I have to say, the ordinary is niacinamide on a 10%. I hate that. That breaks me out. For some reason, this one from Naturium, it is more moisturizing. The consistency is a lot more jellier and soothing. I don't use this daily because I feel like if I were to, it would break me out. But definitely, I do use this like two or three times a week maximum. But definitely, that is still enough for me to see results. And I really like it. 
I feel like we all know when I cinnamide does by now, so I don't need to explain it. But just very quickly, it's great for reducing dark spots, hyperpigmentation, a little bit of redness. It kind of works like azoleic acid, which is going to be my next step. Azoleic acid is really prescribed for people struggling with rosacea because it's that good. Now, I'm aware that I'm going in with a lot of Naturium products. I want to stress this is not sponsored by Miss Susan or Norm Naturium. I just love their products so much and I really believe in her and this brand. I arguably think this is the biggest launch of 2020, not even hyping this up. It is just amazing. You really need to get your hands on it. So we already done three serums and as you can see, the glowing is starting to manifest in our lives. Ah! But these two next steps are going to be the ones that are really going to hit us hard in terms of glow. Ah! So the first one is going to be from The Ordinary, and that is the Amino Acids Plus B5 Serum. I have used this also in my nighttime skincare routine that I've showed you, but literally I use this both in the morning and at night every day. It is that good. It contains the 20 essential amino acids, which basically are one of the biggest building blocks in your skin, like proline, histidine, lysine, thymine. All these are basically going to replenish your skin barrier and really strengthen it, kind of like what ceramides do. But it's really important to replenish these because your skin is just going to work better overall. So better at protecting free radicals and scavenged them itself. Even if you don't apply any antioxidants on top of it, it's going to be better at holding moisture. So less chance of perdomal water loss. Great for dry skin types. It is also going to be great at rejuvenating itself. It's just better to have. Specifically, this would be best for dry skin types. Like they would benefit the most out of this, but literally anyone would. Nobody knows about them quite yet for some reason. So this never goes sold out because it's not hyped at all. And only the true skincare gods like me and you know about the serum and love it. It is arguably the one of the best serums from The Ordinary, even if no one talks about it. It's gonna be this The Ordinary Escobal Trisopalmitate Solution 20% in Vitamin F. I'm applying this last because it has the most oily consistency out of these all, so in that way it would go last. This basically, again, is a derivative of Vitamin C. I did go in with this, but again, as I told you, I feel like this just wasn't enough antioxidant protection, so just to be safe, I'm going in with this one as well, which also has Vitamin F, so it's a little more stable. And this is also the most powerful Vitamin C derivative that The Ordinary offers apart from like vitamin C suspension 22 and 33 if I'm not mistaken. This is just so oily and it really gives you a, a like a very intense glow. You don't need a lot of it because as you can see look at how wet my skin is looking. It is that oily. <laughs> But this is surprisingly so moisturizing itself and it feels so nice on the skin. It does sting the tiniest amount. But honestly, I feel like this would be good even for dry skin types, the sensitive skin types. This is one of the best serums for the winter because it gives you antioxidant protection and it also gives you in crazy hydration. Now we're going to be, of course, sealing everything with the moisturizer process. I call this the process because it ain't no step for me. I am the moisturizing queen and I literally apply for moisturizers. I'm not even kidding. Yes, even in my morning skincare routine. I'm just crazy like that. What can I say? For this reason, all my white t-shirts and my collars are stained with yellow because vitamin C actually stains your clothes if you don't know. So pay attention to that. And just my moisturizer clumps up on my collars and it makes them look disgusting. But what can I say? That's the price of beauty in good skin, I guess. Who's beautiful? Did I meet her? Is she, oh, is she yeah. beautiful? Does she live up to the name? Love this CeraVe moisturizing lotion. I don't think it's hyped in the slightest amount. It deserves all the hype that it gets because it contains ceramides. It is just so nourishing to the skin and it's really gonna strengthen your skin barrier again thanks to the ceramides which are gonna do the same thing as amino acids so having a combo of ceramides and amino acids in your skincare routine is gonna be the ultimate skincare barrier strengthening moisturizing properties combo effect. I arguably would say this is more for oilier skin types. I don't know who told CeraVe that this was suitable for dry skin types. They have lied to her several times straight up to her face or she must have been smoking something when she decided to come up with that but truly I think that the CeraVe in the tub is more targeted for dry skin types, but I really hate that consistency. It is so thick, it clumps up, and it also is mattifying, which is extremely weird for a cream for dry skin types. And as you can see, I'm really going ham with it. I'm doing a full pump for each cheek, and then a pump on the forehead, and another pump on the neck. Like, I'm crazy like that. And by the way, if you have noticed, I no longer use any hyaluronic acid serum. That is because, first of all, hyaluronic acid is very high in this ingredient list, so I don't feel the need to have it in my moisturizer 
and in a serum that is just too much hyaluronic acid but also I feel like ever since I've gotten this much filler in my face my skin is a lot better at holding moisture and that is because filler literally is just jam-packed water and it attracts water and holds water and so my skin has never been as dry as it would be when I didn't have filler so just when you have hyaluronic acid injected all over in your face it just isn't anything special if you apply just on top of your skin because you know the power of hyaluronic acid injected in you okay my lips never get chapped anymore and i definitely think it's because of all the filler in it i mean we're basically super humans honey do you want to be a regular human or do you want to join the gang of basically like the 2020 version of superheroes <laughs> i mean come on she's got a point she's an icon she's a legend and she is the moment now come on now. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes. I let the CeraVe just get synced and sucked up into my skin. My skin is just so talented at sucking, just like its owner. What? We're both so talented. Now it's gonna be time for this lightning wand by Hero Cosmetics. I just love this. But basically, this is supposed to be a spot treatment. Do you know how I feel about spot treatments? I don't like them. Spot treatments for me is this is a whole entire spot. This contains tranexamic acid, it contains vitamin C, it contains licorice extract and niacinamide. But this is definitely truly one of the best serums that I've ever tried at reducing high risk pigmentation and dark spots Like I need a full lifetime supply of this like as soon as I'm gonna be done with this pen Which arguably it's not gonna be for much longer I'm gonna hit up Rachel or hydration CEO and you really need to go follow her on TikTok on Instagram She is one of my best friends influencer friend. She's so lovely. Her content is top-notch amazing Definitely go give her a follow but she actually works for hero cosmetics So, you know, I just tell her up and like Rachel I need me a new pen and she's always so kind to say me more so honestly you guys get this I cannot live a life without this anymore like it's one of those things that once you have them once you can never go without them anymore like I tried Oreos for the first time a week ago I've been eating Oreos ever since every single day for a week like it's just and you know how crazy I am with not eating sugars and having a crazy good diet I know right but just Oreos are so good and I never knew they were that good like they're even better than sex and I haven't had sex for more than a year Arguably, I don't miss it at all, but Oreos? Could I go a year without it now that I've tried them once? I don't think I could. I really don't think I could. Same with this. This bitch just wants some camera time. She's desperate for attention. But I don't like drama, you know? I'm all about sex. It's much better. At least you're not hurting anybody. Oh, and by the way, I want to show you one of my biggest pet peeves. I don't know if you can tell, but there literally is... Yeah, you can see it here. There is a line right here going there, and there also is a line right here. You can see that. And that is basically because I was born with separated fat pads on the cheeks. Like, Basically, our cheekbones are made of fat pads, that is, and bone. That is what gives us, like, the volume in the cheeks. Sometimes it's pretty common that a lot of people have separated fat pads right here. So it basically is just a line that extends from here and just goes down all the way here. And as you can see, I have that remaining. Now, I have had the gap filled with filler, so I no longer physically have the gap. But I definitely do still have the mark on my skin because it's been there for literally my whole entire life. And so it will take a, a while to fade out. But this has been helping so much in speeding the process of it, like, fading and truly like you can tell now why I'm obsessed with beauty and why I'm so insecure about my look because I feel like with knowledge comes power but also if you're a little bit like weak-minded like I am it is also quite dangerous because if you're not aware of your facial anatomy proportions what looks good like all the measurements that are supposed to be accurate and everything like you don't know so you don't notice stuff but me being very passionate about this and also quite being in the space of it like I'm friends with a lot of dermatologists with plastic surgeons me going constantly Constantly to get these procedures done. You start to talk to these people and you really get informed a lot about what looks good, what doesn't look good, what is a flaw in terms of like beauty and aesthetics. And so I notice so many things that normal people in their daily lives don't notice. On top of that, me being in front of the camera literally 24 seven, like and constantly seeing my face, I'm very self-conscious as what my face looks like. And so I feel like this is also another reason why a lot of influencers and celebrities get tons of plastic surgery, whereas normal people in their daily life usually don't get. I feel like it's because we're constantly staring at our own face in front of the camera whereas normal people usually don't like they just take a selfie and that is it so I feel like this is why we're a lot more self-conscious and maybe also a little bit more insecure than the average person let alone also all the hate comments I know that I don't let hate comments get to me but sometimes when you know I'm feeling low and maybe I'm struggling with a depression attack or anxiety attack sometimes you know if I'm in that low state and I read like tons of hate comments it kind of gets to me like especially sometimes oh your face is overfilled 
do you look crazy, super fake, and whatever. I do joke a lot about it, but like it gets to you because I'm changing my appearance and getting all these fillers because I'm insecure of the way I look. And so I feel like with fillers, I do like myself a lot more. So I feel like I am happy with myself and the way I look, but then I get hate comments for being overfilled. So it just is an, a vicious cycle that you never get out of it until I guess you fix it from within. And I'm starting to work on it, but it kind of is hard. But yeah, okay, this got deep for no reason. I'm sorry, I don't know what got into me. Now it's time for the Simple Hydrating Light Moisturizer. You know that I love the Simple line of moisturizers. They are one of the best and so cheap as well. And I use the Rich Replenishing at night and in the morning I use the Hydrating Light Moisturizer. Is there specifically such of a huge difference between the two? Not necessarily. This has more dimethicones and kind of like occlusive ingredients. So that means that it's gonna stop the transubernormal water loss. So that is we all feel like it's more important to use in the morning. And I know that this is crazy amounts, but you have to keep in mind that first of all, I use a lot of active ingredients. So my skin is usually always stripped. Second of all, it is winter time in the UK and the weather here gets so cold and the air gets so dry. And so it really removes all the moisture that you have in your skin. And on top of it all, I'm also in trend knowing so my skin does get dry. And if I don't apply enough moisturizer, even though I have oily skin, my skin really starts to itch because of how dry it feels. Usually sometimes I go in with the First Aid Beauty Moisturizing Cream. I love that one as well. That is like one of the best along with the CeraVe Moisturizer. Like truly, they both contain ceramides and they both contain so many hydrating moisturizing ingredients. I arguably think that for dry skin types, the First Aid Beauty Moisturizer is a lot better. Anyways, guys, I really have to wrap this up. I wish I could stay in chit chat for longer, but I gotta edit a video because I have to post it on YouTube for you guys like in three hours <laughs> and I haven't even started. So you know, this is called time management and organization, things that I'm very good at, as you can say. But <coughs> I swallowed a little bit of moisturizer on. Oh, but anyways, guys, here you go. This is my ultimate morning skin routine that allows me to get the famous glow that I have. This is still looking a little bit wet, but I promise you, once the moisturizer really sinks in and it all settles into your skin, it's gonna look like a very natural, dewy glow. You see me have on camera all the time. I do have to admit, I also go in with a little bit of highlighters. No foundation, but definitely highlighters. Lies, lies, and more lies, and lies on top of lies. The two that I love and that I constantly use, I only use these two, are gonna be of course drugstore. I'm a drugstore queen. They are the Maybelline Face Studio Monster Chrome Highlighters. They are amazing. Specifically, I use the shade Diamond Glow on the nose because I want a more intense like contouring highlight on the nose to really give my tip and my bridge definition. So I use this and if you want to know the brush names, it's the Morphe M431 for the nose. And then I use the Maybelline Master Chrome in shade Molten Rose Gold for the cheeks. The chin, I just do a dot there and then just tap it on here on the forehead to give me a little bit of glow right here. And I use the Morphe M501 brush. And that is it guys, that's how you achieve the famous matte random glow. Keeping your skin moisturized, glowy, dry skin patches three, acne free, and protect your skin from free radicals all at once. Period. Anyways, ma'am, this was the first video this time. My mom and just into joining them family. All you have to do is literally subscribe to the bell icon so you don't miss any of Because sis, let me tell you, we're all about fighting acne, wrinkles, fine lines, and getting your skin really down to the T. Just like we did here. And if this is the thing, make sure you join because you'll love to hear you. And also follow me on my Instagram and on my TikTok, both of them random because there's a lot more skincare that you won't see here. There you are going to see there. And you can see me 24 7 and just further on deep in the bond that I feel between us two. Definitely need to go check me out there as well. And now to everyone who's still watching, you know what time of the video is now. It's time for the Italian word of the video. As this is the video, was all about my morning skincare routine. The Italian word of the video is going to be mattina, which is morning in English. So good morning is gonna be buongiorno. Oh wait, that doesn't make sense then. Okay, no scratch that. So literally translating is gonna be buona mattinata, but we don't usually say that in Italy. We just say good day. So that would be buongiorno. Excuse me, ma'am, what do you think you're doing? You're not gonna look at this video. We need to do is click whenever this new video is right here, just as informative information on what this video is you. But why do that? Remember to random and always random. And I swear, click one of these two or you will never achieve the matte random glow and your skin will be looking dull as ever forever. If you don't want that, click.